Imagine a tiny spacecraft about the size of a family car moving slowly through the deep black sea of space. There are no roads, no lights, no sound. Just darkness and far away a few faint stars. This little traveler has been on the move for almost half a century. It has gone past all the planets we know. It has gone so far that our sun now looks like a small distant star. This brave traveler is NASA's Voyager 1, the farthest human-made object in the universe. It was launched in 1977 when people listened to music on vinyl records and cassette tapes. No one thought it would last this long. Yet it is still alive, billions of kilometers from home, sending soft whispers of data back to Earth with technology older than most people live in today. And now this lonely explorer has found something that shocked scientists and filled millions of minds with wonder. What did it find out there at the edge of forever? And what does it mean for us here on our small blue world? The story begins with a sharp mind and a simple toolkit. In the early 1970s, Gary Flandro, an engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, was threading how the planets move. With only a pencil, paper, and a slide rule, he noticed something rare and amazing. In the late 1970s and the early 1980s, the four giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, would line up in a special way. This lineup would let a spacecraft use each planet's gravity as a slingshot. It could fly past one giant, pick up speed, turn, then fly to the next. All this without burning a lot of fuel. Picture a small boat finding a fast current in the ocean and letting it carry the boat forward. Normally, going from Earth to Neptune could take about 30 years. With this gravity assist, it could be done in about 12. But there was one big catch. This lineup happens only once every 176 years. Miss it and you wait many lifetimes. NASA moved fast. In the summer of 1977, just 15 days apart, two twin spacecraft left Earth. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Their official mission was small by today's standards. Visit Jupiter and Saturn in 4 years, take pictures and send data back. No one could guess that decades later they would still be alive, still exploring and still changing the story of space. In the early years, the Voyager showed us things we had never seen before. Up close, Jupiter's moons were not simple cold rocks, they were alive with activity. Io, one of Jupiter's moons, was covered with volcanoes that shot hot material high into space. Europa was smooth and bright, covered with ice, like a frozen pearl. Many thought there might even be a hidden ocean under Europa's ice. Then came Saturn. Its famous rings did not look smooth and plain from up close. They were made of countless bits of ice and rock shaped into patterns by small hidden moons. Voyager 2 went even farther. It became the first and only spacecraft to visit Uranus in 1986 and Neptune in 1989. Each visit brought new shocks, strange magnetic fields, fierce winds, odd weather, and moons with surfaces that looked like they held old secrets, maybe ancient oceans, maybe old wounds from past events. Getting to Jupiter was not simple. The voyagers had to travel a distance equal to 10 times the gap between Earth and Mercury. They also had to cross the asteroid belt. People once feared this area was so full of rocks that a spacecraft would be smashed into pieces. But the voyagers made it through quietly and safely. Their computers were very small by today's standards. Each had only 69 kilobytes of memory, smaller than a single photo on a modern phone. They stored data on 8-track tape recorders like old car music tapes. To send data home, they used a 23 watt radio transmitter, about the power of a small light bulb. And yet the signal traveled across billions of kilometers. It grew weaker as it went, but giant radio dishes on Earth, part of the deep space network, could still catch it. Even today, a message from Voyager 1 takes more than 22 hours to reach us. Past the planets lies a vast space shaped by our sun. The sun sends out a steady wind of tiny charged particles and magnetic fields. This wind creates a huge bubble around our solar system. That bubble is called the heliosphere. It protects us from some of the harsh radiation that fills the space between the stars. The edge of this bubble is called the heliopause. Crossing it means leaving the sun's protection and stepping into true interstellar space, the space between the stars. For a long time, scientists argued about where that edge might be. Many guessed it was around 50 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. In August 2012, 
Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause. Many in the science world waited for one clear sign. They expected the direction of the magnetic field around the spacecraft to change suddenly. That would mean, yes, the sun's rule is over. You are now in the great beyond. But that expected change did not happen. Something else did. The plasma, a kind of thin, charged gas around Voyager 1 grew much denser. High energy cosmic rays coming from beyond our solar system also grew stronger in number. Both signs said, you are in interstellar space now, but the magnetic field's direction stayed nearly the same. This was a puzzle no one thought would happen. Was the galaxy's magnetic field somehow aligned with the sun's just by luck? Or was the heliopause not a sharp line at all, but a soft shifting border where the sun and the wider galaxy both play a part? Then came a deeper surprise. The space beyond the heliopause was not smooth and empty. It was lively, bumpy and full of change. Voyager found pockets in the plasma. Some areas were dense and hot, others were thin and cold. The differences were big, not small. Scientists began to call these areas plasma clouds. When they studied the data further, they noticed something beautiful and haunting. Many of these clouds seemed to line up with the remains of old supernovas, the giant explosions of stars that died long ago. It was as if Voyager 1 was sailing through a graveyard of stars and each cloud was a sign or a memory of a star that had once burnt bright and then exploded. This finding changed how we see the space between the stars. We once thought it was calm and even. Now we know it is shaped by both gentle winds from stars and sudden violent events like supernovas. These events leave marks that last for ages. Every cloud that Voyager passes tells a little part of the Milky Way's long story. It holds clues about what forces shaped our neighborhood in space. It reminds us that space is not empty, it is alive. There is another part of the story that is pure heart. Voyager 1 carries a gift, the golden record. It is a copper disc covered with gold plating bolted to the spacecraft. It holds sounds and pictures from Earth. There are greetings in 55 languages. There is music from many cultures. There are the sounds of waves on a beach, wind, thunder, a train, a kiss, and a baby's cry. It is a time capsule made for anyone who might find Voyager one day. Maybe millions of years from now, when Earth has changed beyond what we can imagine, Voyager will still be drifting through the galaxy. Maybe someone will find it and learn that once on a small blue planet, there were people who sang songs, loved their children, and looked up at the sky with questions in their hearts. Voyager 1 teaches us a simple truth. You do not always need the newest tools to do great things. You need vision, patience and courage. With only a small memory, old style tape recorders and a weak radio, this machine is still talking to us. On Earth, teams of engineers and scientists listen every day. Huge dish antennas stretch their metal arms toward the sky, waiting for the faintest whisper. Some days the signal is clearer, some days it is noisy. Sometimes an instrument gets tired. The team thinks hard and finds a way to abake it again. Sometimes they rewrite the software so it can do more with less power. Little by little, year after year, they keep this traveler alive. It is a quiet kind of heroism. So what do these discoveries mean for us? First, they remind us that knowledge has no end. We may think we know enough now, but the universe smiles and says, not yet. The fuzzy edge of the heliopause shows that nature's borders are soft, not sharp. The plasma clouds tell us that the galaxy has a history written in light and wind and fire. It is a living place, changing over time. And we? We are part of that living story. We are explorers by nature. Since the beginning, we have looked at a far hill and wondered, what is on the other side? We crossed fields, rivers and seas. We built ships, rails, planes and rockets. Each time we asked, what if? Those two small words built bridges to the next great step. There is also the human side. Voyager 1 is not just wires and metal. It carries the efforts of thousands of people. Scientists who asked bold questions. Engineers who solved problems with steady hands. Technicians who checked every bolt and every wire. Operators who point the antennas and wait for the signal. Every person added a stitch to this long, careful work. Think of the patience it takes to send a signal into the dark and wait almost a day for a reply. 
Think of the pride and the fear each time something goes wrong and the joy when it works again. Voyage is a lesson in teamwork, love of craft and hope. We should not forget the risks. The asteroid belt did not destroy the voyagers. The long cold of space did not freeze them. The tiny computers did not give up. Over time, power has become the biggest challenge. The spacecraft run on nuclear power that slowly fades. The team has turned off some instruments to save energy. One day, the power will be too low. The voice will grow faint. Then, finally, it will be silent. But even when it can no longer speak, Voyager 1 will keep going. It will drift between the stars, a small sign of human curiosity, moving through the night forever. Let us return to that sharp mystery at the edge of the heliosphere. Scientists expected a clean flip in the magnetic field when Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause. Instead, they saw a different kind of proof: higher plasma density and more cosmic rays. These were strong hints that Voyager had entered interstellar space. So, why did the magnetic field not change direction as expected? One idea is that the sun's magnetic field lines are stretched and bent at the edge, making them line up more with the interstellar field than we thought. Another idea is that the heliopause itself is not a wall. It may be a thick, wrinkled border. Think of foam at the edge of a wave on a beach. There is a mix of sea and air. Things blend. Edges can be messy. Voyager 1 taught us to expect such beauty in complexity. Those plasma clouds, the pockets of thick and thin, cold and hot, also carry a message. When the data was compared with maps of old supernova remains, the fit was striking. Many clouds seem to sit in places touched by ancient star explosions. Supernovas push and stir the gas between the stars. They leave ripples that last a very long time. Voyager 1 is moving through some of those ripples now. Every small bump in the data is like a whisper from a long ago event. Each whisper says, a star once lived here. It shone. It died. It changed the space around it. In that way, Voyager is reading pages from the diary of our galaxy. Let us hold the golden record in our minds again. What a quiet, beautiful idea. Send a message in a bottle into the cosmic sea. Do we think someone will find it? We do not know. But that is not the only point. The record is also for us. It says who we are. It says we greet, we sing, we learn, we care. It says we are worth meeting. If a distant mind ever holds the record in its hands, it will hear our waves, our wind, our kisses, our laughter, our music. It will know we tried to send kindness across the dark. One day Voyager 1 will stop sending data. The power will run out. The last message will fly home for more than 22 hours and be heard by patient ears on Earth. There may be a moment of silence in the control room, a weight in the chest, then someone will smile. Because the journey does not end there. Voyager will keep moving. It will pass near stars we cannot see with our eyes. It will drift on, slow and steady, carrying our small sign, the golden record, into the future. That thought is both lonely and beautiful. Why does this story touch us so deeply? Perhaps because it feels like our own story. We too start small. We too face risks, doubts and long stretches of quiet work. We too sometimes have old tools and little power. But we can still go far with courage and care. Maybe you have a dream that seems too big. Maybe you think you need better tools, more time, more help. Remember Voyager 1. A small memory, a weak transmitter, old tapes, and yet look how far it has gone. Sometimes all we need is a slingshot, a little push at the right time, a friend's advice, a new idea, and we can take the next step. If the sky is clear tonight, take a moment, look up, imagine the deep dark, imagine the sun as a small star. Somewhere out there, a tiny ship is moving. It sends us a faint signal across a vast ocean of silence. It carries a record with our hellos and our songs. It carries our hope. Voyager 1 whispers a simple message to us. Humans can dream. Humans can learn. Humans can go farther than anyone thought. All we need is a question, what if? And the courage to find the answer. That is the spirit of Voyager 1. That is also our spirit. And our journey, like its journey, has only just begun.